As I've shared here again and again, we are experiencing a massive national teacher shortage. This year, Quebec was literally only able to guarantee a, quote, adult in every classroom. They had over 8,500 teaching vacancies. 30,000 people who are not qualified to teach taught in Quebec schools in 2020-2021. Temporary teacher certificates in Saskatchewan have more than tripled in the last few years. There are sub-shortages, vacant positions, and education colleges have had to extend application deadlines in order to try to fill spots. People are just not signing up to be teachers anymore. And there's a ton of reasons for that, but today I want to talk about one of the most problematic ones. This problem's deeply rooted in the history of teaching. Once upon a time, when we were still teaching in one-room schoolhouses, teachers were often young women who were unmarried, and they were expected to follow stringent morality rules. Just look at this list of rules from Knox County. You will not get married during the term of your contract. You are not to keep company with men. You're going to be home between the hours of 8 p.m. and 6 a.m. You may not loiter downtown in ice cream stores. You may not travel beyond city limits unless you have the permission of the chairman and the board. You may not ride in a carriage or automobile with any man unless he is your father or brother. You may not smoke cigarettes. You may not dress in bright colors. You may under no circumstances dye your hair. You must wear at least two petticoats. Your dresses must not be any shorter than two inches above the ankle. And to keep the school neat and clean, you must sweep the floor at least once daily, scrub the floor at least once a week with hot soapy water, clean the blackboards at least once a day, and start the fire by 7 a.m. so the room will be warm by 8 a.m. They literally felt that if you were a teacher working for the school, they basically owned you when you're working and when you aren't. And that attitude has persisted ever since. For many years, teachers have been required to sign morality contracts, and in a lot of Catholic school divisions, that's still the case. In modern Catholic divisions, and most places, they are required to follow the, quote, teachings and practices of the Catholic Church. I personally know many people who have had to either delay or lie about living with their partners before they got married in order to not lose their jobs at a Catholic school division. These morality clauses are still very real and still very active. But even when there isn't a distinct morality clause in your contract, teachers are expected by law to uphold the standards of the community. And that's incredibly vague, and it can be used to force teachers to live cloistered lives. Many teachers are directly told to never post on social media. I get asked all the time how I get away with doing this, and the answer is, I have no earthly idea. Frankly, I'm waiting for my luck to run out. But there's case after case of teachers doing perfectly legal things and getting fired for it. There are some examples, like teachers or teachers' assistants having OnlyFans accounts, but even in those cases, what's the actual concern here? Are folks worried that their students are going to find them on these sites? If so, shouldn't we be more concerned that the students are on those sites? And what if the parents see the teachers there? What's the actual concern? That a consenting adult might see another consenting adult? Not that I'm advocating for this, but the reality is that it's irrelevant. What a teacher does in their free time has nothing to do with what they do in the classroom. And the fact that the behavior of teachers in their free time is so heavily policed is a serious problem. Especially when it comes to living in rural divisions. Teachers are often very reluctant to live in the cities or towns that they work in because they're constantly under a microscope. They can't go out with their friends, they can't go on dates, because they're constantly being watched and surveilled by the community and expected to act in certain ways. And there are so many examples of this. One teacher in Texas got fired after attending a drag show. They just went to a drag show and they got fired as a consequence. One teacher in Missouri was fired after making a joke about farting in his classroom on TikTok. Divisions really do believe that they just own teachers in their free time, and the law seems to back that up. These morality clauses have pretty consistently been upheld by the courts, which is a huge problem. But the real problem I want to share here is how much of the lives of teachers are controlled by their employers. Because I want to highlight a story from Montreal. It's the story of a woman named Deborah de Brecler. I hope I got that right. She was very excited to learn that she was going to be on the second season of Survivor Quebec, a French version of Survivor. And this story is absolutely ridiculous. She requested two months of unpaid leave in November to go on the show. She was told no because there weren't enough subs. She found subs herself and even made a video to prepare the students for when she left. But she was warned that if she went ahead with the sanctioned time off, even though she had found her own subs, she could face repercussions. And as a result, she was fired. Despite the board claiming that there was a teacher shortage, they fired her. And now they've offered to rehire her as her own sub while not offering her back a contract. So she can sub for herself, but they won't rehire her entirely because she wanted to take unpaid time off and a leave that she was entitled to. The division just insisted they couldn't cover it, but it was covered. So it wasn't even about getting coverage. It was just about control. And that's the heart of the issue. Parents, divisions, and governments really feel like they own teachers and their lives. And they feel entitled to every moment of a teacher's day and to get teachers to do whatever they want, whenever they want. Just look at this incredible comment that I got on Twitter where somebody asked me what would happen in the case of a 3 a.m. teaching emergency which is just amazing. 
what possible 3 a.m. emergency could come up in the world of teaching? Like, some kids really stuck on their long division homework and can't sleep? This is the issue. People's expectations of teachers are wildly unrealistic. And until we start treating teachers like actual human beings who have lives outside of the classroom, things aren't going to get any better. Why would anybody sign up for this? Why sign up to live under a microscope when you can get a job in the private sector where nobody cares what you do in your free time? Things won't get any better until we rethink what we ask of our teachers.